know so far about, about the earthquake in Alaska? Okay, so we, we have a magnitude 7.0 to the northwest of the city of Anchorage at a pretty significant depth, um, something like 20 to 30 miles below the surface of the earth. It's in the slab. So for people who understand plate tectonics, we have the Pacific Ocean going underneath Alaska. And at the interface, you get the really big earthquakes, the 9.2 back in 1964. But as the slab goes down, it's now getting released a little bit, and we have a normal fault sort of spreading out the slab as it goes down. So this is a much smaller earthquake than 94, or excuse me, than 64. And the uh, uh, shaking is probably similar, though, in Anchorage because this earthquake is right underneath Anchorage, and it would be over a pretty large area. Now, it's a little too early for us to get clear uh, inju reports of injuries or the scope of the damage, but we do see from TV studios, we see video of uh, disruptions inside the building, we see roads that have been impacted, and we also see reports of fires. Now, this is precisely what you have told us we need to be prepared for in the event of the next big earthquake. Well, and it's precisely what we saw in Northridge. I mean, Northridge is not a bad comparison for this earthquake. This earthquake is 7.0, Northridge is 6.7, so there's something like three times times as much energy being released in this event, um, but it's deeper and therefore everybody's somewhat farther away just because the earthquake's down in the earth and then, and so they're not quite as close. So the overall level of shaking is similar. Of course, Anchorage is a smaller city than Los Angeles, but it's still got 300,000 people. So everything that we've seen, fires getting set off, basically everything thrown off of any shelf that's available. Good buildings built to code doing fine, old buildings being damaged, that's all. It's what we see every time. And I think that's people sometimes think that you never know what's going to happen in the earthquake. You do know what's going to happen. What we don't know is when a particular fault is going to be moving. Let's take a look at the map that shows us where the shaking was. So what do we see here? Okay, well, this is showing us the epicenter rather than the shaking itself. So this star is the epicenter of the magnitude 7. By comparison, here's the fault that produced the 9.2 in 1964. So that, you can see, is like 500 miles long. Uh, this is a much smaller fault, maybe 40, 50 miles, but it's right underneath Anchorage. And as we look at the... Oh, I, don't see it up now, but we did see people who were reporting who felt it, over 400 people saying they felt it up there. Right, right. so we have our did you feel it report. You know, when we get it in Los Angeles, we get a lot more uh, answers than that, but it sounds like people don't have electricity to connect to, to be able to tell us what they felt. We are seeing it as far north as Fairbanks and, as, and out on the coast, which is about what you would expect for the size earthquake. Two more questions. When we get more information back, pictures back, what do you expect we're going to see? I, I expect to see a significant disruption to infrastructure because it sounds like liquefaction was a major factor in this earthquake. That's a situation where you shake a, a loose soil, it compresses. If there's water in that soil, as the soil compresses, the water gets compressed, it acts like quicksand. And quicksand does a really bad job of holding up buildings. So we see a collapse of structures. You can have a really well-engineered structure, but if the ground disappears underneath you, that's a major issue. Uh, and that's also going to disrupt things like the water system and the sewer system. So I would expect they'll have major problems with that over the next Will we see injuries in your estimation? I would find it hard to imagine no injuries, uh, though I've been really impressed at the pictures I have seen, how many people seem to be doing drop, cover, hold on. So maybe our 10 years of shakeout trying to get that message through is making some difference. I hope so. Which leads me to my last question. Every earthquake is a teachable moment. For scientists like you, it goes much deeper. But for all of the rest of us, what can we learn based on what we know so far from this earthquake? <sighs> I guess for me the teachable moment is, see, we do understand basically what goes on. We can tell you what it's going to be, and you have choices to make about it. When you're being told that your building needs to be retrofitted, what we're trying to do is make sure that Northridge Meadows doesn't get repeated. And it looks like maybe we aren't having deaths in Alaska. Maybe something's going to be coming through, but they've got a pretty strong building code because they have to deal with magnitude nines. Uh, and when you put that really strong building code in, it makes a difference. And when you feel the shaking, the natural tendency is to run outside once again. What does this tell us? When we have the earthquake, drop, cover, hold on really is the safest thing to do. Your instinct makes you want to get outside, but running puts you at danger. But you running through things that are being thrown off of shelves. Look at how much stuff's on the ground. If you're running through that, it's going to be you know, hitting you as you try to run. 
running during a big strong shaking, you fall, you sprain your ankles, you break your legs. Uh, we've had people die from trying to run in earthquakes. And seeing all these people do drop cover hold on is really encouraging. I hope everybody was taking notes. Lucy Jones. <laughs>